Hey folks, do a species profile on the convict cichlid. Um, I would give you the scientific name on it, but it changes so often I can't keep up with what it is. Um, I'll put a few of the examples of what it has been recently up here. Um, but it's a uh, New World cichlid that gets uh, four to six inches. Uh, comes in a couple different color varieties. The black variety is a, a darker body with black stripes, and the female will get a uh, reddish pink on her abdomen. The male will have more uh, like fin extensions on the dorsal fin and uh, I guess the anal fin and there's also the other really common variety is the pink variety but there's <coughs> excuse me there's other varieties that are coming out marbled and, and blues and, and other rare varieties and the reason they're able to get these uh, different color varieties out is because they are excellent breeders and they're mildly aggressive until they start breeding and they will be very territorial. Uh, they like to spawn in caves, rock work, that type of stuff. They'll uh, prefer a sandy substrate that they can move around or small pebbles. They can uh, redecorate it as they choose. The Parents are great parents, they'll raise their own fry. Tank size, anything 20, 20, 30 gallons or larger. And when they're breeding, I would suggest it be a species only tank because they will kill or be aggressive towards anything else in the tank. Um, they will eat about anything they're omnivores, they'll eat flake, pellet, frozen, live, freeze dried, whatever you offer them. They're really uh, not picky about their food. They're not really picky about anything. Uh, they can go temperatures from, we'll say 70 to 80, but they've been found in uh, other areas where water temperatures are down to 63 and where water temperatures are up to 86. Um, I don't suggest keeping them in those temperatures, but they can tolerate wide changes, very large changes in pH and uh, hardness. And that's part of the reason they've become so invasive in, in many areas. They've been found, uh, so, so they're native to Central America, the lakes there, and they've been found in Japan, Australia, uh, Mexico, the U.S., a, a ton of different countries, just wild, not wild, but invasive wild, um, because they are so adaptable and tolerant, and because they do breed so uh, prolific, so rapidly. Um, they've become invasive in some areas. I would say they're pretty common in the hobby, but I have had a time finding some. Um, but I, I've recently gotten some, so we'll see how they do. And uh, hopefully you'll join me for those videos. Um, yeah, they're, they're great little beginner fish for uh, people wanting to breed something other than live bears and because they will take care of their their fry, their offspring, and get them up to a good size. The fry when they're born, uh, their first foods can be crumbled flakes. They're large enough to eat that. And uh, the parents will start pushing the fry away whenever they get new eggs. And if you were to remove the fry, 
from the tank of the parents, the parents will more than likely respawn and uh, lay more eggs. So being that, that convicts are so popular out there, um, if you've had dealings with convict cichlid, also known as zebra cichlid in some parts of the world, uh, with the species name, most recently I believe is uh, nigrofasciatus, but like I said it changes fairly, uh, fairly frequently, so I'll put up here uh, some of the scientific names that it's went by. Uh, if you've had dealings with those, leave something in the comments and let me know your tips for them, your thoughts of them, and uh, till next time, hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button, the notification button, all those buttons up there. We'll see you next time.